Hey everyone, Gil Gross here post-match. Ashley Barty versus Madison Keys, Australian Open 2022 semi-final. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in 3, 2, 1. Ash Barty has still not dropped a set and has not given up four games in a set en route to the Australian Open final. She's taken out the unseated American Madison Keys 6-1. 6-3 in an hour and two minutes. This match was disappointing, but I committed to covering it, said I'd cover it, planned on covering it, so I'm going to cover it. And uh, it gives me a chance to talk about Ash Barty, who's definitely someone who's interested me a lot because I, I have felt like she's levels above a lot of her competition and and maybe public perception hasn't caught up to that yet. I think it's getting there. Now she has a lot more to achieve. She has two slams to her name. You know, I, I don't think she's done yet. And, you know, she's been number one in the world for three years in a row, which is a, an amazing achievement. But obviously some of that has been discredited by some of the weird pandemic circumstances, especially her being Australian. I would argue it adds to the impressiveness of what she's done over the last three years, but nonetheless, it makes things a little bit funky. Well, if she uh, wins the Australian Open, then she will have become a major champion across three surfaces. She's won a match. She's one match away from doing so. So that's one step in the direction of Ash Barty cementing her legacy as not just one of the world one of the many world number ones that we've seen emerge on the WTA tour in the post Serena Williams era but really the next dominant force on the tour and someone with staying power and someone who is who is going to really deliver consistent presence at the end of majors. And I think Ash Barty's going to do that. I really do. So about this Madison Keys match, she did everything better. It was uh, not an interesting match because there was nothing that Keys did that was at all threatening to Ash Barty in this match. But it's funny after Jessica Pagula makes the comments that she made after after Barty beat her and Pagula was like, you know, the thing is about Barty is she's a little bit better at everything, everything. And that match or this match rather is kind of a good representation of this because you look at the keys versus Barty matchup and coming in, you think, well, you know, keys is big server, big hitter. Maybe she can pull kind of a Sabalenka. I mean, Sabalenka, Played some really good tight matches against Ash Barty and, and beat her a couple times in 2021. And maybe we can see that. We can see uh, Keys look to overpower the more finesse reliant player in Ash Barty who has a little bit less of the raw muscle, uh, the raw, you know, hitting power, right? Maybe. I mean, that it wasn't even close to being a match of that resemblance or that makeup. Uh, Barty hit more aces, 5-1. to one. Her average first serve speed was 5 miles per hour faster. Check that, 6 miles per hour faster than Madison Keyes' average first serve speed. If you look at Baseline winners, Ash Barty hit eight, Madison Keys hit six. If you look at the more accurate metric of baseline aggression, which includes forced errors, Ash Barty still hit more, forced more errors on the backhand side than Keys and forced more errors on the forehand side. So off of both wings was uh, was more damaging. So who's the power player here, right? Who's the big server power player? It really it wasn't Keys. I think Barty hit bigger in that match, and she did more offensive damage. So where was Keys' advantage if it wasn't there? Of course, it, it was nowhere, unfortunately, uh, despite this being a, a good, you know, a great, actually, a great run for Madison Keys and showing a lot of positive growth in 
shot selection, discipline, hitting on the run, extending rallies, consistency, shot tolerance, you know, the things that that traditionally hold her back. She just had no advantage here because she lost her. It, it was like she lost her identity on the court. I do want to point out two things, though, in particular that stood out to me by Barty in this match, besides the fact that she outplayed Keys in Madison Keys's strengths, which is one, the low short slice defense against the power hitting of, of Madison Keys. Very, very effective. I love the way Barty defended her backhand because instead of instead of obviously defending with height cross court which is the traditional way to defend in modern tennis you add some spin you add some net clearance you go cross court uh Barty would much rather use her slice backhand to defend uh especially on the backhand but even on the forehand she loves to use the slice to defend and then once you go to that shot well you can float it deep or you can try to get it short in the court. And that's what Barty did against Keys. And it's kind of counterintuitive, right? That you would want to hit the ball short when defending. And against some players, it wouldn't work. Anyone who is comfortable in the midcourt, anyone who likes to hit an approach shot and come forward. Is that a little bit rare on the WTA? I would say so. I think that there are players, you know, more players who are uncomfortable in the forecourt. Um generally speaking and and it's you get lesser examples but like Barty would be an example of a player who that likely wouldn't work against but more importantly it's against someone who hits big from the baseline and doesn't have as much feel and hands if you put them in the midcourt and you make them hit that approach shot and forget the forget the idea that they might be forced to come forward forget that even if they stay back or back up you you take the power out and it becomes a feel and precision shot. When you have to hit the ball in the midcourt from a low contact point, you have to bring the ball up and down. You can't really hit that ball hard. If you hit it fast, it's just not going to go in. So it becomes a, a matter of feel. So to do that against Keys, to defend low and short against Madison Keys, it was, it was really very smart and it was it was very it was very fun to watch Barty blunt that power just take all the the pace out of that and just defend short in the court and see it work as well as it did you know keys just doesn't want to hit a, a forehand between the baseline and the service line from a low contact point you know key that's a nightmare for keys uh the second thing is Barty's second serve and Barty's Barty's kick serve is so good that I think it really frees up her first serve. And I, I see a lot of Ash Barty matches where her first serve percentage isn't great. It got better at the end of this match, but it really wasn't great for a lot of it. And in the first set, she she served at 45%. And Barty is a really good example of why I don't like first serve percentage, and I don't think it's a very good stat. Because if you're Ash Barty and you are winning in this first set, and you can win 8 out of your 11 second serve points. And if you watch how those points play out, uh, her kick serve to Keyes' backhand was giving her the forehands that she wants anyway. So if you have a second serve that good, why wouldn't you look to, and you can you can win well over half the points off of it, why wouldn't you look to paint the line on your first serve? which is, I think, what Barty does. You know, she doesn't sell herself short. She goes for small targets, and if she misses them, she, she has a second serve that she can defend. It would be a mistake if Ash served a higher first serve percentage at expense of winning less first serve points because there's nothing to be afraid of. There, why, why be afraid of missing your first serve if you can defend your second? So this was a set where Barty served 45% first serves in. How do I think she served? Amazing. Great. I think she served perfect because she won 78% of those points. Two of those first two of those nine first serves in play were aces and let's see how many how many came back. Um oh, I guess I can't see that for the for the set. I can only see that for the match. But oh no, no, I can. 
Um, so of those nine first serves, only four came back in play. So she served great, you know, l low percentage, but she served, she served great. I wouldn't want her to serve higher percentage at the expense of keys getting more returns in play because Barty would, would serve to safer spots in the box. So that's one dynamic that I think was on full display in this match. Do not pay attention to Barty's first serves in. It doesn't really matter for her. What matters is that she's winning a high percentage of first and second serve points, and she has the ability to do that uh, against against most opponents. So that is all. Right now, Collins and Sviantek are playing. Danielle Collins is up 5-2 in the first set. Uh, so uh, we will see what happens as Ash Barty, one match away from winning the Australian Open, becoming the first Aussie to do it in 44 years. I wish her luck. And I believe I will be covering the final. I don't think I'll be covering this Collins-Fiontech match. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.